Hey guys, just a little bit of forewarning in this video. I'm going to be talking about a lot of Russian people and places, and in doing so we'll be saying their names, most likely butchering pronunciations. This is not meant as disrespect towards anyone or any place inside of the video. I'm going to do my best. Uh, I've been working with someone who is able to read Russian and trying to get their help with the pronunciations, but I know they are in no way perfect and will not claim that they are. That being said, let's jump into the video. What do you do when you are angry? For most, they just stew in it, but eventually work through it. But that was not enough for Maria Oktobrovskaya, who, after finding out her husband died in a battle with Nazi Germany, sold her possessions to donate a tank to the Soviet army, and requested permission to be its driver. And they gave it to her. I'm Dylan or Metallic Rain, and in this episode of War Stories, we're going to hear of Maria Oktobrovskaya and her tank, Fighting Girlfriend. Born in 1905, in the village of Kiet, now Blizny, on the Crimean Peninsula, Maria Oktyablevskaya grew up a member of a peasant Ukrainian family. Maria grew up poor but worked as a canner and later as a telephone operator in the city's telephone exchange. In 1925, she would marry Ilya Oktyablevskaya, who was a Soviet army officer. Maria was extremely competitive with her new husband, not wanting to be unable to do anything he could, and so began learning how to operate weapons and vehicles of the Soviet army, and would earn the title of Voroshilov Shooter, a civilian badge and honorary title denoting the person as a trained marksman. She was also an active member of the military community, and was well known for singing patriotic songs to soldiers on their way to the front. This would all come to an end for her when her husband was sent to the front and she was forced to evacuate her home. Two years after her evacuation, she would learn that her husband had died in a battle near Kiev when leading a rifle charge. At this news, she became outraged, immediately selling all of her possessions and began working to afford the production of a tank. After commissioning the tank, she would write the Kremlin and Joseph Stalin personally, explaining her story and requesting the tank be named Fighting Girlfriend, and she be the one to drive it, writing, I have a specialty of a driver, I have an excellent command of a machine gun, and I am a Voroshilov shooter. Yosef Stalin himself would surprisingly respond, writing, Thank you, Maria, for your concern for the armed forces of the Red Army. Your wish will be granted. Please accept my greetings. Supreme Commander-in-Chief, Yosef Stalin. Maria was sent to the Omsk Tank School, and upon graduating, she would finally meet her tank, Fighting Girlfriend, of which she would be the driver and mechanic. She would then be assigned to the 26th Guards Tank Brigade. Initially, many of her fellow tankers felt her actions were more for publicity and propaganda than anything else, but those opinions would rapidly change when on November 14th, 1943, Maria would leap out of her tank after its tracks were disabled by enemy fire and repair them under the cover of her crew. But this battle was not enough to temper Maria's wrath. In the next battle, she and her crew would hold off the enemy as they waited for infantry support, which had been cut off due to enemy fire. After the battle, the battalion commander would come over the radio saying, Fight as the tankers of the fighting girlfriend fight. Only today, the crew of the glorious tank destroyed a platoon of Hitler's bandits. In January 1944, Fighting Girlfriend would take part in the Leningrad Novograd Offensive, where it would successfully fight over the trenches, destroying enemy machine gun nests and a Ferdinand tank destroyer. Fighting Girlfriend then took a hit from a German anti tank shell, damaging the tracks. Maria hopped out of the vehicle amidst heavy artillery and machine gun fire to repair the tracks, using the extra track link stored on the tank. In doing so, she would trigger a mine, the shrapnel hitting her in the eye and the leg, rendering her unconscious. She was stretchered off the battlefield and transported to Smolensk, where she was examined by a surgeon who determined little could be done as the the shrapnel had gone through the eye and into her brain. She would be visited by a member of the military council who had been to the front, and was happy to let her know that the other crew members were healthy, and her fighting girlfriend survived the battle. Maria's health would continue to decline, with her ultimately falling into a coma. She would pass on March 15, 1944. Maria's crew would continue fighting until the end of the war, ultimately needing four T-34 tanks to make it to the very end, but on each one was emblazoned the words, fighting girlfriend, as Maria had done. In August of that year, Maria Oktobrevskaya would posthumously be awarded the hero of the Soviet Union, the highest distinction in the Soviet Union, for her bravery in battle, and would be the first female Soviet tanker awarded such an honor. Today, Maria is memorialized at the Tom School No. 24, which bears her name. In its courtyard, there is a monument to Maria, as well as a section of the school's museum that preserves relics and materials relating to her. That's the story of Maria Oktobrskaya and her tank, Fighting Girlfriend. Have any stories in history you'd like to see on War Stories? Let me know in the comments below, as well as what you thought of the video. Make sure to like the video if you did, as well as subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future uploads. Until then, I've been Dylan or Metallic Rain, and I will see you next time on War Stories.